Hello internet world. Welcome to a new video on the Geeky Noise channel. I am extremely, extremely excited to bring you this video. Uh, it's been a long time since I featured an Apple product on the channel. And the reason I'm so excited is because if you look back to when the channel first started, I primarily cov covered Apple products on the channel. It was all Apple. And then I sort of diversified a little bit, covered more technology. And uh, now I'm back to covering an another Apple product, the first in a long time. And indeed, I'll be following this up with another video showing my productivity and time management using the iPad Pro. But for this video, it's the iPad Magic Keyboard, or I think it should be called the iPad Pro Magic Keyboard because it only works with the iPad Pro. Uh, this uh, could turn your iPad into a laptop replacement. Or could it? How have I been getting on, on, getting on with it? Well, uh, mixed feelings. It's a very high quality product. First of all, the packaging, as always with Apple, is rock solid. Uh, this is a picture of the keyboard on the front. The keyboard's sitting on my desk. I'll give you a closer look at that in a short while. If we look round the back here, you can see the different positions that you can put this in. And it is multi-angle to a certain degree, pardon the pun, uh, but you can adjust the, the uh, angle of the screen, and I'll, sh I'll show you that in action as well. And um, it's really good. The reason I got this in was not just um, so that I could do the review, but for another reason as well. I've got my MacBook Pro here. It's currently running the live chat, and I've got a problem with the option key and the command key on it. It needs to go in for repair. The keyboard is not working properly. Uh, but because of the current situation, I cannot get it repaired at the moment. Uh, they've said it will take uh, probably about two weeks to turn it around, possibly double that time. And I can't afford to be without a laptop for that length of time. I already had the iPad Pro in, so I thought, well, let's try the Magic Keyboard, see if I can do my regular work on here. And it's been going okay. I'll give you more details very, very shortly, but it has been going okay. So before we switch views, and have a look at the Magic Keyboard. Let me know if you've got any questions. You can put them in the live chat. A big hello to Golden Solution, John Bushel, Andy, the iPad Kid, and Sugar Key. Thank you very much for tuning in live. I really do appreciate it. Sorry, Sugar K. Thanks for tuning in live. And Matthew Jones and uh, LaFile. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Um, good morning, Dave. Sugar K says, hope you and the family are doing well. We are doing fine. Uh, I hope you're all doing fine as well. Uh, let's switch views and have a look at this magic keyboard. Now, there was already a keyboard available for the iPad Pro. How this one differs is in quite a few of the features. First of all, we've got a little mini trackpad, which when you move it around has an icon on the screen. So we've got trackpad control and mouse control now on iOS, which is really nice. You can also angle this, so I can angle the screen up a little bit. That's as far as it goes. So if I tip this up, you'll be able to see on the screen, as I move the trackpad, uh, we've got the little pointer moving around on the screen. And it sort of uh, locks on to icons as you hit the icon that you want to do. It sort of locks onto that area. So it's not perfect. I wish you could change this little dot that's on the screen to an actual arrow. Maybe they will do that in a future version. Uh, but it works. It works fine. Even when you go into the dock, it sort of hovers over the icons. I'm going to be giving you a typing demonstration on this very shortly. But it, but it works anyway. You've also got gestures. So, for example, if I go into my notes here and then do a three finger gesture, it allows me to go back home. So there are certain gestures that you can uh, actually use on the trackpad. It's not a bad size, it's not the as large as on the MacBook Pro for example. If I just pull this in to shot, you'll be able to see it's not as big as the MacBook Pro trackpad, but it is workable. It's, it's, an, it's an okay size. So we've also got the keyboard, backlit keyboard, which is nice. To adjust the brightness, you do have to go into settings. It's quite a convoluted way. There's no shortcut keys. Also of note, there's no function keys on this keyboard. If I just move the iPad out of the way, you can see there is room for one, but it would be quite cramped. So there's no function keys. That is a shame. Now, 
I did notice on the Apple website, and I'll show you a picture of this in a short while, there is a Logitech Slim Folio Pro case in stock uh, for the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. It doesn't have a trackpad, so everything shifts down, and then you've got a row of function keys. I might well try that one because this is a very expensive device. This is like 300, and, I think it's 340 pounds or thereabouts. It might even be more than that. It is a lot of money for this uh, particular keyboard. Uh, far too expensive, uh, in my opinion. Uh, what else have we got? Well, let's take the Apple Pencil off. Don't need that at the moment. Uh, when we close this down, so let's just, uh, it does automatically sleep. Let's just uh, close this down and we can close it down like so. So it works as a case. So now my iPad is protected front and back. There is no protection on the sides. So the sides remain uh, sort of uh, susceptible to scratches. And when you open it, you can't open it like a laptop. There's not, not enough weight there. So you do have to open it by holding the base down. And then as you move the iPad into the angle, it turns the iPad on and you can unlock it. The angles that you can adjust it to aren't great. I'll show you this on the other camera, but that's as far back as it goes. And then you can adjust it forwards, but you're, you're not limited to just two positions as you are with other keyboards. Uh, the connectors on the back actually power the keyboard from the iPad's battery. So some other keyboards, you do have to actually uh, charge the keyboard. So this uses the iPad's battery. Now, before I show you another little feature that's nice on this, let's do a little bit of typing. It's going to be hard for you to see because I can't get the screen back any further, uh, but it, it feels really nice. And I think it's scissor switches on the, the keys as well. So let's do a little bit of typing. You can get a really nice speed going. It's not loud at all. It's a nice quiet keyboard. In fact, it's better than the keyboard in my current MacBook Pro for tactility accuracy. It feels very, very nice indeed. Let's just pull the mic down uh, into position so you can hear how loud it is. Pretty good. I think that's a pretty good uh, typing experience. Uh, I've been very pleased with it so far. Uh, there are obviously uh, shortcuts as well. You can hold down, I think it's command or, or certain key and you can get sort of keyboard modifiers. Uh, something of note, let's just uh, pick this up so you get a little bit better view. So you can see the angle that you can get. That's the best angle you can get. You can only go upwards from there. It doesn't go down any flatter. I wish there was some sort of mechanism so it went down completely flat, but alas, it doesn't. And also, your fingers are quite close to this. When you're typing using the numbers, uh, sort of one through zero, you're, you know, you're quite close to this. There's no escape key, something else worth noting. So if you want to escape or get out of a, an application, you have to use a shortcut on the trackpad or interact with the screen itself. Uh, so that is a... You know that's a little bit of a of an issue for me now on the side here if i just show you it this way round, on the side there is a usb c port just down here that's like a through port so that allows you to charge the ipad through that port so that's really good because you've still got access to the usb c port on this side of the ipad to maybe put a little dock if you want a memory card reader for example hdmi output things like that so you can put like a dock on this side and still charge the iPad through that USB port. Uh, there is a cutout of course for the camera and as I mentioned before the sides and edges of the iPad remain sort of open to the elements they're not protected uh, but that allows you to take it off quite easily so if I just want to remove it I can just pick the iPad up like so and remove it from the magic keyboard so that's really nice and then putting it on is extremely easy because the magnets just pull it into position so it's really easy to to put on and pull off like so do it again that's off and then to pop it back on the magnets just pull it back down into position and then you're ready to go the fact it's got the little connectors on the back which are just here 
little connectors that line up with the connectors on here means that it works extremely well. Very, very nice indeed. Let me just pop the iPad out of the way. Oh, just to let you know, I'm really enjoying the iPad Pro and I will be doing that productivity video uh, very soon. So that's the Magic Keyboard. Will I be keeping it? Well, it's, it's really difficult because it is an extremely nice piece of kit. Typing is very nice on it. The trackpad's nice. But I'm very tempted to have a look at this um, Logitech one. Let me just show you a picture of it. I'm not going to do a screen share, uh, but this is what the Logitech one looks like. You can see it on there. And uh, that could work pretty well. Now, admittedly, there's no trackpad on that, but I could use a Magic Trackpad 2 alongside that. And the difference in price is this Logitech one is £109. Backlit keyboard. I think you have to charge it from time to time, so that's one of the downsides. I don't think it draws on the power of the iPad, but I might be wrong on that. Uh, and it gives some protection to the corners and the bottom of the iPad as well. So am I going to keep this one? That's the big question. Can it turn your iPad into a laptop? That's another big question. Let's answer those two now. Uh, first of all, the laptop question. Can this replace my MacBook Pro? Well, I've tried doing some of my uh, sort of link sharing. Uh, that is doable. Everything's been doable, but it takes longer. And there are still instances where I would still want my MacBook Pro or even the new MacBook Air, which if you combine the cost of the iPad Pro and the Magic Keyboard, works out cheaper to buy a MacBook Air, even if you go for the top end one. So this is very exp and very expensive combination, but it is beautifully made. I wish it had more angle adjustment i wish it could go back more but then it might topple over because it's going to be a bit top heavy because you've got a thin keyboard and uh, a heavy ipad uh, in fact they've made this keyboard quite heavy uh, this is actually heavier than the ipad pro itself so this more than doubles the weight of the uh, ipad pro when used in combination with uh, this keyboard <clears throat> excuse me it's a nice bit of kit though very nice indeed uh, let's take a look. Uh, so, oh, I should answer the question properly. Can it replace a laptop? It can replace a laptop. Will it replace mine? No, it can't replace what I do on my laptop. Not yet, uh, unless you really do dedicate a lot of time to it and workarounds. So I don't think it will replace my laptop. And I do honestly think it is too expensive. I think it should be you know, if they can get it in for 199 then it's still an expensive keyboard, but it's doable. Let's take a look inside the live chat. Uh, iFile, excuse me for not pronouncing your username correctly, iFile, uh, how does the iPad compare uh, or different to previous generations? Uh, this iPad is pretty much the same as previous generation, just upgrade to the cameras really little bit of a speed improvement as well. Uh, John Bushell, the problem I've had with my 2020 Pro that came yesterday is only one case, uh, UAG on Amazon. Uh, I'm on 10 hooks till I get my protection, uh, may get one of those in the end. I picked up, where is it? Let me pop it back in the case and I can show you. I picked up this case, I think it's from ESR, and it's just a, a simple gel case. This is what I've been putting my iPad into. Uh, or check out that Logitech one, John. That Logitech one is available already. So this is what I've got my iPad in. It's just a simple gel case. I think it was about six or seven pounds. Uh, but I've seen the UAG one. The UAG one looks really nice. and It's got that kickstand on the back. Uh, we've also got a question from uh, Guillermo Ramos. Can the volume be adjusted from the keyboard? Uh, no, there are no media keys on this, no function keys. And that's something that that Logitech keyboard actually offers. So that might be a better choice. Uh, can you add a hub to the keyboard or only charge through USB-C? I'm pretty sure that you can only charge, but don't quote me on that. Um, I haven't tested it, so I can't answer you accurately on that question. I think that's pretty much it on all of the questions. Thank you very much for those additional questions on the keyboard. Uh, I think it's a really uh, good option, but very expensive, uh, but high quality as always. Apple done a fantastic job on this. I just think it's too expensive and they've missed some opportunities. 
more angle adjustment, extra weight in the base to stop it feeling a little bit top heavy. Function keys would have been nice so that you could adjust volume, brightness direct from the keyboard and an escape key. Come on Apple, you could have done a lot more uh, and the price is crazy, it is crazy high. That's it for this video, thank you very much for watching. If you've got any more questions at all about this product, please do pop them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, please do share it. Uh, and also, if you're not really subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel. I publish a new tech video pretty much every single day. Thanks very much, everyone. Wishing you a fantastic day ahead, and I'll see you in another video very, very soon.